So for Marmoset, there are a few main things you need to take care of, right? First, you need to make sure all your uh, materials and textures are named right. Which I could not say about what you sent me here. Hello. I'm gonna wing it as it is. Well, there are two arm textures. Oh, why the normal here is the one that I sent you and you didn't import it into substance? I thought that there is like no influence on the materials from what you did in substance. So Sava, you need to go into your substance file, re-import the normal curvature ambient occlusion what I sent you there into your scene and re-export all the textures. Not just put the normal that, that I baked for you. The fixed one. Okay. So, in terms of, uh, of lighting a scene, right? This is super boring, right? Because our camera, it's linear. We have like the most boring sky that it's lighting up from all directions. You can also see that it's pretty much white, right? When it's ambient. So it, yeah. it gives a very boring light in general. So the first thing that you're going to do is to, you know, pull up a sky that it's, it has some contrasts, right? So in general, the, the night skies or the interior skies are the best, right? But some of them like, this one that it's by default it's one of the interior skies but it's like too light up right so you want something where you have more contrast because this will actually bring you more uniqueness to the reflections right it's going to look much much better right so the first step that you're going to do is to change the fucking sky right the next step that you're going to do is to change your camera, right? Because you're going to change this to ACES, let's say. And ACES will need a, a bit of bump in exposure, right? Because it's going to become too dark. Right? And then you can, you can play with the positioning of, of the sky. And then by just clicking here, right? You can create lights that are focused where the sky is, right? Like if you put a blur sky here, you have a light that's going to be here directional and we're going to have another light for this. Right? We can put even a third here, but it won't matter that much because it's basically kind of like the same direction. Right? But these are directional lights and directional lights tend to, to go to infinity and because of that, the, the shadow map will, will suffer, right? So the, the best way to, to fix this is to convert them to spot, right? But then you're going to have to reposition them, right? Like you're going to have to, to take them here. And in general, you're going to need to take them a little bit higher, right? The next part that you're going to do for, for these lights after uh, deciding the positioning of them, right? Is to play with the, with the actual value for them, right? Or they might become a little bit too, too lost because they're spots, right? So this needs to have more influence here to actually see the specular on your on your mesh. And this is like the strong light, like the key light in, in this scene, which definitely needs to be much stronger, right? To illuminate like everything properly. Now, based on this, right now you don't really see, right? But the shadows that you have are like super harsh, right? Like the edges of the shadows are super harsh. And that's because your light has like no size. It's like a point in the world that fucking 
uh, spreads the light, right? So you're gonna have to come in here and actually add some uh, some size to your light. Size that it's by default it's the sphere, right? Which can grow like this, or you can literally change it to rectangle and kind of like try to mimic the size of this window, right? So let's say you, we can do something, you know, like a window. And this will, like the bigger you go with that, right? You can see here in the specularity that the more uniform the the reflection becomes for that part, right? So don't go to extremes. You need to find the, the cool balance where the shadows get a little bit blurred, right? Because they become area shadow, shadows. But also retain, you know, a lot of the information for the for the specularity. Like, look at the shadow here, right? You see how how harsh it is. Now, when I'm gonna put some diameter here, you see it getting nice and blurry, like it would be in reality. It bigger the light source, softer the shadow. Exactly, because you're getting photons from a bigger area, so they spread when they bounce from from the surface, right? Suns. Sun should be like, in theory, big, right? But in reality, it's really small. It's really far, just powerful. That's why you got sharp shadows from from sun. Sun. All right. So, this is like the most basic setup that you can do for for your lights, right? Now, <clears throat> there's also a uh, hey, white flag. Thanks for for the sub. So there's also like the whole lighting theory, right? With three lights, where we have a key light, like we have this one here, right? One strong light here that it's gonna uh, light up our our hands from kind of like the direction of the camera, either sides of it, right? To get the nice uh, information of of your model here. Then you're gonna have a a rim light, which is our light here, right? That's gonna give us the the nice light on the on the edges of the object. And sometimes you need a third light that kind of comes from because if I turn down the, the sky here, right? You're gonna see that there are areas that are pure black, right? Because the light from here and the light from here do not catch those areas, right? So in general you're gonna have to come and put like a, a third light here, which is like super low intensity, right? It's not gonna be super strong, right? It's just gonna be a little bit of intensity to simulate like the bouncing light in the areas where the light is not going uh, straight. Another thing that I like to do with the lights is to, to remove the spot sharpness, because this determines like, uh, if I make it, I'm gonna make this spot like smaller. Actually, let's make on the on the key light, right? If I make this spo spot smaller, right, like to cover only a part, right? You can see that the, at the edge of the spot here, you have a transition, right? If you put the spot sharpness to one, it's gonna be like you know a lamp that has an, an occlusion, right? Like the uh, how the fuck it's called? Penumbra that plastic bit right that it's on top and when the light shines it's it, it, it literally goes only in one spot and it's like having a very hard shadow in between the areas that are illuminated and the ones that are not right and in general i go with the spot uh sharpness to zero so i have a very nice gradient in between the the illuminated and the the, the shadow areas right and then you just need to make sure that your light it kind of goes all over your assets right and this this is like a a simplistic but very effective uh setup for for your lights right like you don't need three billion lights right i don't know if you guys seen but sava sent me this let me show you so you understand and which is i wish i could say it's the first time when i see this kind of stuff from my students right but it's not. These are the lights that Sava placed in his scene. <laughs> and and this is insane, yeah, right? Uh, like it's you literally ruin everything you worked on your on your materials, right? Because 
everything will get illuminated. So this is completely avoidable. I don't get me wrong. You can you can go and 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 place a few more lights if you want to accentuate a a, a specular spot or if you want to put accent of light on something, right? But this this is not okay because this will literally make your 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 mesh, you know, uh, completely illuminated and you're not going to have the nice transitions in between light, you know, light and shadow. You're not going to have anything because it's going to be illuminated from all the fucking uh, directions. Now, what, what, where you want to go further with this, right, to, to create a scene that actually looks nice. I'm going to put the sky back, right, so we're going to get some illumination from the sky and some uh, some reflection information, right? From the HDRI. The next step that you want to go is to uh, push your camera settings, right? Because it, it, your lighting setup is pretty much done. You you will maybe change the position a little bit to you know expose some areas more more than others. But in principle, this is kind of like where where the light is good enough and you don't care about it anymore right so the the next steps are to actually improve this the way the scene looks like right and in scene first of all you can go with mega for shadow quality to have better resolution for your shadows then you have ambient occlusion right which is a must like there is no way in reality you're not going to have any kind of ambient occlusion and if you want to set up your ambient occlusion you go with this, this uh, strength to maximum right to make sure that you have the right size for your ambient occlusion because you don't want it to be like super big you don't want it to be like super tiny and it's invisible right so you need to find like a good balance where the uh, the ambient occlusion hits pretty nice on on your mesh and then you you just you just go and temper down the the strength right to a, a lower value right but this is going to improve a lot the the perception of of your asset right because it's gonna literally be casted even if it's screen space right it's gonna be casted on the on the depth map right so it's gonna be on on your asset and it's gonna accentuate forms and you know cavities and whatnot intersection in between surfaces the next thing is if you have highly reflective uh meshes right like a lot of metal and shit you can also try to use local reflections because it's going to start reflecting uh, and local diffuse is going to start reflecting some of the, the information from the other parts, right? You don't really have any real crazy fucking uh, meshes that reflect, but if you would have like these hands very close together, right? The local reflection will introduce some, some values there on the metal, right? That reflect it's not uh really important for your asset server but sometimes you can use it i don't really use them unless i have like reflective surfaces because they tend to add a, a level of noise on your scene right then the rest it's all about about your camera settings right so you can play with the contrast, you can play with the contrast center, you can play with the level of saturation, but in general for me, they kind of stay to default. You can put a little bit of sharpen if you want, but I tend to go with the limit lower, so it's only going to sharpen like the very small details and not everything, right? Because if I go with this crazy, you will see that the higher you go with the limit, the, the bigger the, the shapes are going to be uh, sharpened, right? So I tend to go with a low limit and, you know, an average value for the sharpen just to enhance a little bit things around. But you will see like a lot of people who are presenting weapons, like the guys from uh, uh, War Dogs, right? That they literally put like the all the fucking shit like this, right? And it drives me insane. Right? Because it's it's adding way too much sharpness and it's it's unrealistic, right? It's not having the good feeling of of the world then most of you don't like fucking bloom but bloom it's a thing that exists in real life any fucking camera will have at least a basic level of bloom 
obviously don't fucking overdo it and it's the same as ambient occlusion you put it to maximum and then you play with the size of it to kind of understand where it's gonna bloom how far from your mesh right when you're happy with the with the size then you tune down the values to where it's barely perceptible who doesn't like the bloom there's a lot of people who don't like the bloom right but this already gives you a lot of a lot more natural feeling to your uh, to your scene right by having a tiny bit of bloom there where where the light hits the surface right then you can play with a little bit of vignette because in reality you know the camera uh, lens has like a little bit of depth and it has a plastic cover and it kind of cast a bit of shadow so the the focus will be more in the center of the of the image right don't go like this right that's that's not how you do you know your your vignette right you just put a little bit of darkness uh, and you play with it you can even put some color if you want in it it's gonna give you like some interesting effects if you want to emphasize on on a different color scheme for for your image is it bloom more visible if you put fog no the bloom kind of remained the same but the fog if it's white it's gonna cast its own bloom right so then it's gonna look like it's more visible but in reality it's gonna be fucking bloom everywhere i know you hate bloom on vfx but bloom it's a natural thing it, it exists okay so you have this then you can literally go and play with the curves of your color right and like if you want to do a like a color grading but it's not like an actual color grading that you're gonna do for a movie right where you actually have all the control in the world right it's gonna do you know uh you can change like uh, all the colors all levels of the colors right this is a much more rudimentary uh uh color grading but you can do pretty cool stuff right like you can improve the highlights by moving this up right it's gonna uh, enhance the highlights and if you move put another spot here and you move it down you're gonna get a very high contrasty feel to your image right but that depends a lot on how what you want to do with your with your image right if you take like this dot and you move it up you see you're gonna lose the blacks if you move this down you're going to lose the white so if you want a very moody uh, image you can go and make like a curve that it's you know something like this and it's going to give you a very like it's going to cut a lot of the highlights and then it's going to slowly uh, temper down to 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 dark areas without going crazy right so everything is going to be a bit more light up but it's not going to go overboard with the with the high values right because they're not gonna uh get burned right if you temper it down like this or you can go as i said like you can go with a with a very high contrast and shit like this right where your darks will become very dark and everything is going to get saturated and whatnot in general if i play with the curves i, I kind of tend to have a tiny bit of contrast you know and temper down maybe the highlights a bit if if they get burned if i have areas like this where it's uh super strong right i can go down a bit and and try to you know cut some of the whites now you can go and do this for each color right so you can you can go and say like hey you know i want to pump up more the reds in my uh in my uh image then you can literally go and take the color right and give it more contrast right so in the shadows i'm gonna cut down the 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 reds right and i'm gonna push in the highlights and mid-tones more of the red values right obviously don't go too extreme because then you're gonna get some fucking weird uh color schemes right but you can do something like like very soft and get some nice color grading for your for your scene right or if you want let's say you want more blue in your shadows right you can go and literally put a little bit more 
more blue on the lower side here, right? And that will will give you more bluish shadows and, and a feeling of, you know, a colder scene. So it, it all depends on what you're exactly trying to achieve, right? But for the sake of it, right, I'll leave this only for, for the red with a little bit of extra kink to it, right? And you can change this at any point and you can go and, and play with the values and, and have like a nice uh, result, right? That will, will give you a very cinematic look indeed. But how do you know that you added it exactly in the shadows, this blue? Because this is like the, this curve that you have here. It's like this, Saba. This area is for the highlights. This is for the midtones. This is for the shadows, right? Because this is zero in in lightness. This is one in lightness. So the the higher you go with the value, the more lightness. So if you take a point from here and you make a curve that it's like this, the point will be higher, right? So your midtones will be lighter. You understand? Yes. And that applies for the colors also. So if you put more blue on the curve in the in the lower area here, right, it's going to get more information of that color in, in, in that area. You understand? Like the, 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 the blue that you were having in the shadows is going to become uh, lighter. So it's going to help a lot with that. What's that, Natalia? Curse, curse, curse. Yeah. Go and watch what Natalia uh, showed there about the curse. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you have you already have like a very strong hail story. Thanks for the for the sub. You already have like a very good nice uh setup for your light and, and camera, right? Now it comes it comes down to, you know, focus. Because there's no way in real life you will not have you know, uh, depth of field. Now, by default, the settings in the fucking depth of field in, in Marmoset are insane. It's like super macro shot. Like this will be the size of a fucking finger, right? So the first thing that you can do is to, to lower the bokeh size quite low, right? You still want to, to get some uh, blur information, right, in, in the distance. But you don't want like this kind of craziness, right? You want it to be like very, very subtle, right? And you can literally control for near and far blur, right? So if you if you want to, uh, like your focal point will be here, but you want this to to kind of be focalized a bit, like you can still understand what's going on in here, right? You can lower down the near blur, and you can increase the the far blur, right? More so you get more uh, depth of field in distance and less up close right but that depends a lot on what you're trying to uh to do right so if you want for example this right you're focusing here and you want this to be detailed and whatnot and you still want to see details here but you want everything in the background to be blurred right you play with the with the near and far blur and if you need right you you go with the mac uh, maximum bokeh size to have like a, a macro shot right where this becomes super blurry in the distance. All right, but in general, you want a very subtle uh, blur because you want to present your stuff and, and actually see what's going on, but you still want to have a little bit of depth of field so that it, it looks believable, right? Then you have a little bit of extra stuff in here in distortion, like chromatic aberration, if you want to simulate like, you know, how the cameras are shooting they make this fucking overlay for for the edges obviously you're not going to go to that kind of values right but you can put a little bit more and it's going to give you a more close to a camera shot give me a second
I'm back. Welcome back. Come back. Okay. So the other you put a little bit of chromatic aberration, right? To to give it a more realistic feel. And the other thing that you can do is to add a little bit of grain, right? Because there's a little bit of noise in the scenes, especially if you have a a dark setup like here, right? You're gonna get this kind of noise in your in your background, but obviously don't go like fucking crazy like this, because this is you know it's gonna ruin completely uh, your uh, your image, right? So you put a little bit of grain to get even more of that that natural feel uh, of your shot, mm -hmm. right? After that, it's all about you know compiling a scene like I did for you, right? I just uh, as I told you, like just grab some uh, uh, mega scan assets, you know, you, you t pick up a table, you put a fucking uh... yeah. All of these are are defects of a normal camera, but it's what also gives the realist to to your shot. Otherwise, it's it's looking fake, right? Like if you don't use any of those, it will uh, it will look very fake. And then you have you know you have a, a light setup that can can work, right? And even if you go and let's say you're not gonna keep your sky like this, right? And you want to to put like an ambient sky, right? Where you only have like a color, or you want to even go straight to a fucking color, right? This will still feel like quite, quite realistic and believable. Mm -hmm. And if you compile a scene, like put together, you know, like I sent you, like the images that I did today, right, for you in half an hour, then you can have something that looks really nice, really fast, you know, like this. When he was setting the light uh, uh, by clicking on this window, uh, how you figure out where exactly you should click to to set it? Where it's light on the fucking map here. Where is the light coming from on this map? Hey, Sam. Oh, from on these windows, right? Yeah, exactly. It's coming from the windows, right? On on a different sky, it comes. You know, from these doors. On on this sky, it's coming from the sky because it's an ambient light, right? On on this shot, it's coming mostly from this fucking street light. That's where you click to create the lights. But you don't really need to create the lights exactly there. But it's if you do that, you're kind of making sure that where you created the light, it's also where you have on sky on your sky. Even if you're going to use an ambient sky, right? It's kind of where you're going to have on your on your ambient sky at least you're going to have the, the whiteness, the, the light values, right? So if you put this, it will always, you know, the, your light is going to cast kind of from there, right? So it's going to make sense if you're going to make a an animation around. It's going to make sense that your light is casting from that direction. Mm. You understand? Yes. Yes. And then you're going to send me a scene with 50 lights again? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as I said, like you can add some extra lights. Like for example, in this this kind of shot, in the position where the arms are, because they're like this, and the lights are kind of casting from from sides, right? Where the fuck are the lights? Right? The lights are are not casting from top, right? They're I move them a little bit to cast from top, but they're not really from top. And I could. You can go here and introduce, for example, a tiny bit of light here to get a little bit more information in this area, right? From a, from a light, right? Mm -hmm. And actually get more detail here on your on your hands, right? But if you go with more than four or five lights, then it's a, it's an overkill, in my opinion. But I would never, uh, I would never put more than four or five lights. And I usually do four or five lights when I actually have, you know, uh, a lot of metals and shit that require all all those different highlights.
Hmm. I I don't think there's any student of mine who didn't fucking overreacted with the lights, Lucas. Do you recall? So this is this is like a very fucking simple way of doing your stuff and presenting it and it's it's gonna work like it's gonna look nice no matter what sky you're picking or no matter what you're doing right mm -hmm. <coughs> well you know how it is in reality Mortec. If you're taking actual shots of a product, they will want like a billion fucking lights, something that's unnatural, while we're doing 3D and we want our stuff to look natural. Will he pose them? These files that he have here are literally posable. Right? Everything can be moved. Yeah, I actually paused them, but uh, I don't know why it's uh, the pause. Yeah, when reset. it resets because here you have auto reload. So when you reopen the scene, it's going to reload automatically. If you don't, guess what? It's going to work. Oh, okay. Because yeah, when it reloads, it's going to put everything in the original position. Right. Thank you, Georgian. Welcome. Yeah. There you go. I pause it. No, it's just linked because it's hard surface. It's ready to post. If you make a good setup or if you use what I did for your setup, but you do what I said with the textures, right? Send them to the substance and re-export them correctly. Then it should be pretty much ready for post. I don't, I can't recall why, but for some reason I couldn't uh, export normal map there in Substance. What do you mean you could not export normal map in Substance? There you can I show the renders again? Like this, it's, I, I was doing like a very quick setup for, for Sava to present his stuff. Oh yeah, this, this renders is amazing. Remember that detective? No, the table is from from Megascan. It has no fuzz. It's just uh, it's just a big light that I have on the side. Megascan sponge. You check the scale of the table. It's a scale. It's a big table. How many lights did I use for this one? Two. Two. Literally two lights. Don't need more, or are there three? I think I have also. I can't recall. I can open the scene. I saved it. Do you mean you would check if the hand fits the table? 
No, three lights I have. And I have a... This is the, the main light. This is a filler. And a ring light. That is very low in intensity. And the HDRI, yeah, and that adds a lot of light because I used a different HDRI that I was showing. Castle interior, whatever the fuck is this. So it has a strong light point here. Mm. Yeah, but the same principles, like there's, there's nothing different here that I did earlier. But it was just to show uh, Sava, you know, a quick setup to, to present his stuff. And not go crazy. Now, Sava wanted to do this in Unreal. To make this work in Unreal, it's gonna take a fucking long time. You know? It's literally going to take a long time and stress to put it together and make it look like this and definitely not half an hour. 